What is going on, Don't Unfriend Me Nation? It is a gorgeous, gorgeous hot day in Virginia. Whew. Listen, Jack, Jack, his name, Tashera. I, I, I have no idea. I, I know when you try to pronounce it the correct way, it sounds nothing like it's spelled like Kirkendall in Texas. Um, but Jack Teixeira is what we're going to call him, is the Air National Guardsman, who I think was an airman first class. I'm not sure. But it's not really important. Decided that he was going to take a career that is probably one of the most rewarding in intelligence and one of the most lucrative if you do it right after you get out not during that's the whole point you start making money while you're in you're probably selling secrets but really threw away an amazing opportunity to see the world to do amazing things with your country and learn to lie like a professional should um, you might ask and you're seeing all these experts come out of the woodwork you know oh well you know i know this and i know his clearance, and I know what he did and didn't do. Listen, you can't be an expert in everything. And that's why I try to stay really close to the, to the vest when it comes to politics and things that have to do with the military and the government and intelligence. Uh, those are kind of my areas of expertise outside of hockey and a few other things. And I try not to stray from those things. But everyone seems to be an expert nowadays, whether it's um, about COVID or whether it's about uh, gender, or uh, it's about uh, vaccines or hot air balloons. But in this case, um, I know a little bit about working in intelligence, especially for the military and the DOD. I'm not going to give you my resume. Either you've seen my show or you haven't. And if you have, great. And if you haven't, you have now, and you get to decide whether I'm credible or not. But I guess the conversation comes down, this is a multifaceted conversation, and there's many different angles. And the first angle is, uh, is Jack Teixeira a traitor? Um, and in, in the sense of the word, um, he decided to go ahead and share classified information. Um, the levels of classification are really not important. Anything over confidential that was shared outside of the network uh, essentially can be tried for uh, breaching not just etiquette, but protocol and um, really, the things that are ingrained, in, uh, ingrained into all intelligence professionals is ensuring that the secrecy of the intelligence gathering sources, the systems, and the assets in place are protected at all costs. So breaking that is an abortion of what an intelligence professional should and should not do. Is it treasonous? Well, these were wartime documents. And you might say, well, wait a second, we haven't declared war since World War II. You're absolutely right. But the definition of war is much different than it used to be. And open conflicts or uh, insurgencies or nation building or proxy wars, uh, they're all birds of the feather. And if the United States has assets in a foreign country that are being exposed, then most assuredly it would fall under treason. Now, uh, is it wrong? Yes. Do I condone it? No. Uh, do I think people like Snowden and Teixeira and others who have done this are, are doing it wrong? Yes. I, I, I 100%. It goes against everything that I ever believed as an intelligence professional. And the core, not even really belief has anything to do with it. It's simply a part of the credo. However, this guy uh, was not doing this for financial gain like Snowden did. Snowden, you know, you don't go to Hong Kong. Um, you don't go to countries that don't extradite. You, there are plenty that you could go to that are not in communists in nature or enemies of the United States. Um, there's a reason why Snowden fled to um, foreign countries that were uh, enemies of the United States. It creates complexity. Extradition is difficult. It's messy. Uh, and it adds a blanket of security that they could provide that he no longer had once he betrayed the government. Now, no matter what you think, there are so many different issues here because it comes down to this. Was it wrong? Yes, it is. And I don't care. The content is immaterial. The action itself before 
one piece of information is removed from a skiff or removed from the JIC or breaches the door of compartmentalization, the action, is it wrong? Yes. It's a betrayal of your country. It's a betrayal of the oath that you swore to protect um, and the oath to the Constitution um, and your oath as a professional. So, so that's clear and dry. There is no debate there. And that's from a more of a procedural and professional outlook. Now let's talk about the moral and ethical version of this tale. The information shows, and I'm not going to disseminate any of it. I'm not going to provide you any details because uh, no, no matter if it's out in the ether or not, and you can have access to it, I'm not going to assist in the, um, the crime of spreading information that is deemed absolutely crucial to the national security um, rules and classifications there onto all documents or all matters of intelligence. I'm just not going to do it. So I'll be vague. If you release something that shows that the Biden administration or the military are involved in illegal, unauthorized troop movements and conflicts happening, that are not authorized, if that hypothetically is what was released about Ukraine, then you have not only violated several uh, laws from a global perspective, from treaties and agreement perspective, but more importantly, the laws of the United States and the Constitution of this country. If we find that clandestine operations or training or uh, any attacks or insurgencies or counter retaliatory strikes are happening from U.S. soldiers in Ukraine, um, this information is honestly hidden from us at all times anyway. You have to understand that the, the United States government works in anonymity because of national security reasons. And a lot of things have been used for national security. And the, 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 it's a misnomer to assume that just because the government says, hey, this is critical to national security, that it is, and, and may be overused sometimes, but either way, it's their distinction to make and not ours. The United States does not have to provide any information to the American people. It's not their job. Their job is to protect the American people, and they will deem what is necessary uh, to do that job effectively and without prejudice. The fourth estate and the media, it's their responsibility to find the truth and bring it to the people, which doesn't happen very often anymore. The moral dilemma of this is that the information that was released by Snowden and others from a whistleblower standpoint is that once the information is out there, what should we do with it? And the U.S. government is just ignore it, put a lid on it, um, redact it and blackline it and, and trivialize the importance. And unfortunately, that is, as an intelligence professional, when I have intel, uh, I believe acting on it is important. And I believe that the media, citizen journalists, people like myself, should absolutely 100% do whatever they can to use this information to find the truth. So it is a double-edged sword. However, there's also journalistic integrity which comes into play that spreading information of a classified nature is, in fact, treason, is, in fact, against the law. So you might be saying, well, wait a second, you're playing out of both sides of your mouth. Well, that's because I've played in both sides of the field. I've been the person who is responsible to protect information, and now I'm a person who tries to get the information out. So maybe it isn't a moral or procedural dilemma. Maybe it's focused on the choices that the United States government is making from being involved in a proxy war in Ukraine Sounding like we are doing extensive training in Poland and Ukraine. Sounds like we have boots in the ground engaged in conflict with Russian soldiers and Russian military in 
limiting the amount of personnel in the military that can actually handle the workload that intelligence has, which is insurmountable from a human standpoint. It is difficult. There aren't enough analysts to process the amount of data which is eclipsing and encroaching upon our six feet, our area of responsibility. It was difficult when I was in 24 years ago. I can't imagine today with social media and phones and instant gratification for information, how difficult it is for analysts to maintain this workload. And when you remove people from the military for vaccines and stupid stuff, and your recruiting numbers are at all time low because Gen Z doesn't believe in what the, the standard generation does that you serve your country and, and, and you stand behind the flag and you go out and you toe the line like the previous generations, and recruiting numbers are completely down because people have less trust in the military, less trust in the government than ever before. Maybe it's the decisions of the United States government that are bringing these things upon themselves. Lastly, a lot of people say, well, wait a second, this kid was an airman first class or whatever, and he, uh, he was young, and why would he have so much responsibility? At 21 years of age, going on 22, I had a TS SCI clearance, compartmentalized clearance, and I had a higher clearance than most admirals. Um, had in my fleet. And the reason why is because when you work in intelligence, it is a need to know. And compartmentalized information and keyword access information is, is privy to only those who are either working and have responsibility in that AOR or ultimately are read into uh, the collection of that topic or the tasks that are assigned to you. And not every admiral needs to be read in on certain things. So the clearances that I had were higher than some. And I was a young kid. It's not about the age. It's about the maturity level. And usually what happens is there's a stagger into how much responsibility a low level or entry level intelligence analyst receives. Some people might be scrubbing message traffic or they might be um, a secondary on a gold watch or a blue watch or they might be assisting in uh, a brief by rotating slides or collecting information that isn't readily available at that moment and going through Jane's Dictionary or other intel sources to, to, to give that information to the, the person providing the brief or in the debrief. Low-level stuff. Now, if you want to start talking about strike and target acquisition and satellite imagery of, of high-sensitive data or radio comms or human intelligence, those things come in time, and usually when the area of responsibility is expanded and trust expands, and the only thing that happens is, with that and why it happens is success and time. That's it. Growth. But if you are running a skeleton crew in, in, a, in a jick or a, a skiff, and you don't have enough people to do the job because of choices made with kids doing drugs today and having their entire profiles open on Facebook, where everything's an open book, and getting a security clearance is more difficult than it ever has, even though there's more security clearances today than there have been ever. It's still, you see a lot of people fail through the, the basic single scope investigations because their entire life is an open book. Hell, they don't even need to send the DOD out hardly anymore. They can go to a Facebook and disqualify a person on Twitter or Facebook or, or in a chat group. So maybe it comes down to that the choices that the United States government has made when it comes to national security, the failures that we've seen from the FBI and the CIA, and maybe that the whole reason this is happening is because the United States government is failing at a level from an infrastructure standpoint in Intel, from a systems standpoint from Intel, from a dissemination standpoint, from a collection standpoint, and are always playing behind to catch up. We saw this with 9-11. It was an intelligence failure. We're seeing this with school shootings with the FBI. The FBI has databases that are from here to Kansas, and unfortunately, they're not able to go ahead and execute effectively because of manpower and limited budget because the areas of focus are no longer on the home front. It's no longer in the structural integrity of our intel apparatus. It's focused on over-asset and overdrive into digital acquisition from a worldwide and national standpoint.
the days of tradecraft and human intelligence and, and, and getting intelligence the hard way is now being replaced with a lackadaisical lack of respect for the intelligence community. And unfortunately, it has failed the American people way too often. This kid is not a hero. This kid is not a patriot. This is a kid who is looking for attention on a Discord server with his gamer buddies and trying to be the biggest in the room. Unfortunately, he's about to find out what the biggest in the room is, and it is a very uncomfortable proposition that will not be coming from the front, but most assuredly coming from behind. Thanks for listening. If you have not, go to at the dumb show. You can follow the show. We'll be on tonight at probably 930. We have my daughter's play. And we will go ahead and be live. We'll also have a recorded show. God bless. Thanks for watching. And thanks for sweating out here with me. It is hot in Virginia. God bless. And I'll keep you informed with anything else that I have or thoughts about this topic. See ya.